Hey everyone, so in this episode we're going to pick up where we left off. We're going to implement the rest of our get products, delete products, and update product. Let's go into our main.js and let's create these methods. So let's copy get products. Let's paste this here. And we're going to be getting get product slash plus ID. And we're going to pass ID to get product. We also want to add ID to our product model. Okay. And let's go to our index HTML page. Let's copy the create button. And instead of create, let's do update. Okay. And let's do VF. We're going to use the if directive to basically swap between creating and updating the product. So if product model dot ID is not and V else. And here, let's just say in our paragraph, let's add two buttons. Let's do edit. And let's do remove. And let's do edit product on click. Edit product. And on click here. Let's do delete product. Let's implement edit product. Create a new method, and we're going to say this dot product model equals a new object. And let's set the ID of whatever we're going to, whichever product we pass here. So we're going to do this. No, not this. We're going to do product ID. Let's copy this a few times. Let's put a comma. And our properties were name. Description and value. Copy these here. Let's copy create product, paste it here, and let's say update product. Change this to put, and the rest doesn't change. So <clears throat> instead of uh, pushing, we want to splice the object. So the way we can do this is let's just do object index say zero. So when we edit the product, we're going to pass in the product and we're going to pass in the index and we're going to set this object index to the index. Okay. So then when we actually do update it, we're going to go into our pro pro products. We're going to splice at this object index we're just going to splice one and what we're going to insert uh, is our what we're going to insert is our result data so one thing missing from our methods is delete product so what we want to actually copy let's copy get product now let's put it at the end here and instead of get let's do delete and let's do delete here product ID and what we want to do by the end of this is we're gonna again pass an index here and we're gonna do these this product we want to splice at the index and we want to splice one and don't forget the s here so let's run this by the way I'm gonna mention it now there is an extension for Google Chrome it's called view and it's really good for debugging and you should get it I'm gonna show you how you can use it now. So you get a, an extra tab in your debugging tools and you can look at this. Okay. So let's get our products <clears throat> and let's look at all this stuff we get here. So first things first, we actually forgot to add index here. So the way you bring out the index in the for each loop that we have here is you just specify an index here and then edit product. So we wanted to pass our product and index and delete product we wanted to pass our product id okay so let's refresh let's get our product and let's press edit see what happens okay so this one didn't actually change but you can see if 
we press edit our product model here changes so yeah so now we get the ability to update products and as we actually want to change this here to update product and actually update product so let's refresh that because we can update the dom so so let's edit the price first first product update and oh ah right so i remember we don't actually have an implementation for our update product so let's do that now so the way you want to update it is first you want to start tracking the changes with an any framework product equals let's get the first you want to get the product from the database first or default let's do id equals quest dot okay so we actually need an id here okay so you can see the power that we just changed the request here and it doesn't affect the request here that we use to create the product so again single responsibility awesome all right so now that we have our product let's go ahead and change it so new response okay so let's run this so let's get products get the first one and let's update the price product and uh, let's see if that actually did anything products let's take the first one and there it is so test updated update product and you can see that it splices this correctly so you can see also whenever we set a project the object index updates so it knows which index to splice after we update it so let's see if remove works so this new let's select it first and let's remove it Okay, it didn't work quite as uh, expected. Or actually, it did. It just removed the the incorrect uh, product from the array. So the splice here didn't work. We didn't pass an index. My bad. So here, let's pass an index. And again, let's refresh. Let's get products and let's delete this. Product number two. Okay, cool. One thing is we have to click get products every time we want to get products. So how do we load it in automatically? So there's something called lifecycle hooks in view, and I'm gonna leave a description. <laughs> I keep saying this, why? I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you to guys to go read in the documentation. But basically there are events happening at certain stages, like loading view up, when it's mounted, and when the view updates, uh, it's uh, whenever updates are happening, you, c you guys can see, it's a very good documentation, you guys, you guys should read it, but basically we're gonna use the mounted function. So this function is executed once, and in here, we're gonna call this dot get products, okay? So let's refresh this. Let's see what's happening. Okay. Your product is not a function. Good. Okay. So you see, we refresh it and it loads it automatically. So we don't actually need this button here anymore. So at the moment, we're not actually using our get product. And the reason we want to use it is the following. So let's say when we get our products, we don't want to return the description anymore, right? Same as if we would like have an image or like size guide or whatever, we don't want to return it when we have a list of products, right? But when we get 
a product we want to return the description okay so let's go into our main JS and when we go to our edit product instead of creating this I'm gonna copy this one call go call this get product and we're gonna pass product actually let's pass ID let's change this product to ID let's uh, pass product ID to our method here let's go to our get product uh, method here let's post this here and all we're gonna do is create a product variable and bind the product that we get in our response to it and then we can pretty much just use it here you can repeat the rest data instead of the product but I'd rather have a, a local variable that I can look at okay so let's run this see if it works okay so now let's click edit and we get a 404 so let's check out why okay so it's still products here let's refresh let's edit okay so you can see the description updates even though we don't have let's open our view plugin i'm gonna leave a description for <laughs> i'm gonna leave the description and the link for this view plugin as well guys so you can see in our products list we don't actually have the description but we do utilize the get here so when we press edit boom you can see where we're getting a post to get the full model and let's edit the price update product it updates and updates the list as well and we're only doing a single request to do the update So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and uh, you are able to follow. I know this is kind of fast paced, but these tutorials are going to take a long time to write up and this bubbling on doesn't help the time for the tutorials. But yeah, if you like these episodes, subscribe, like, it's going to help, um, help my channel a lot. It motivates me to bring these awesome videos to you. If you have any questions, let me help you even further and put them in the comments so I can answer them. And as always, see you in the next episode.